We have Sodarsen in the black trunks taking on Darius Solga in the red ball shorts. And again, Dina, an absolutely unbelievable reception for the RVK MMA fighter. They've had so many fans fly over here to support their guys. It's great to see. Yeah, all the way from Iceland, and they're known for just churning out absolute studs in MMA. Was that a low blow? Sorry, I missed that one. Yeah, I think we've got a low blow here. Tell him to keep it, um, the knees up to the center, not go too low, but almost certainly unintentional, so we get a warning at first. Yeah, he will have five minutes to recover, but he's keen to get it on now. Yeah, we saw Thorleifsson earlier on from RVK MMA with a stunning performance. See if his teammate can follow up here. Darius Solga, though, Dean. Seven fights on his record, 4-3-0, and fighting out of BKK. You know, he's got Jack Mason in his corner, a very, very experienced campaigner on the pro scene in the UK, fought all around the world, and that team's very, very experienced. So I'm expecting Solga to be a very solid all-rounder. So Darson's working that body lock, but he needs to get his left arm and funnel in, get double unhooks for optimum control in this position. This type of range is where so many of those BKK fighters are so good. Mason himself, very, very good in the clinch, good takedowns. So I'm sure Solga's very experienced. He's had this position in the gym. As Thor Darsen reverses his man. And here we go. This is the optimum control we were talking about. Double underhooks here from Thor Darsen. He's going to keep heavy with his body. See the way he's driving his left leg forward. Could looking for the inside trips here. Using the cage very well. But credit to Saga, he's got a decent base. He's using the right overhook. He's keeping his head nice and high. Did a great job of defending the takedown attempts. Yeah, I think there was another low blow in there. This time it was Thor Darson that landed the low blow. Got his own back for earlier. Referee Rich Mitchell calls time, and again, as earlier on in the round, fighter will have five minutes to recover from this. I don't think I've ever... I did a UFC once in Abu Dhabi where a guy took four minutes 40. I don't think I've ever seen someone take the full five minutes, Dean. They're usually ready to go. And as I say that, Solga's ready to get it on now. Solga with some nice in and out footwork, very comfortable from the southpaw and the orthodox stance, again with a knee. <laughs> again, I, I don't, was that a low blow and an eye poke, I think. So that else is just petting that left eye of his. I mean, Dean, you've been in fights yourself, Thai fights as well. I don't know what box these guys are wearing, but if you've got a Thai steel cup, how punishing are those? glancing blows really well you've got to kind of imagine as it a greenhouse over a load of plants but sometimes the plants are sticking out the window so when <laughs> it gets slammed down you can sometimes damage the plants <laughs> fantastic explanation there and Solga looking for this plum clinch couple of nice knees to the body and a nice right hand on the end here comes Thor Darson again with the head pressure he did a great job of keeping his head underneath the chin of Solga Close round, a lot of it, sort of a war of attrition there in the uh, in the clinch range. I did expect Solga to be solid there, and he certainly is, but Thordarsson as well, Dean, having his moments. I mean, the story of the round really was a series of low blows. Uh, obviously, they won't score on the judges' scorecard, so going to be interesting to see how that one is in the books. Moving into the second round, it's going to be very, very interesting to see the instructions from both corners and whether both fighters might try and avoid this clinch area, Dean. Yeah, Solga did a great job of switching techniques, he used strikes in that clinch, where as we saw Thor Dalson really just use ultimate pressure to look for the outside and inside trip. So let's see if Solga now can further switch up the techniques and obtain the takedown. Yeah, it was a nice couple of knees landed to the body from Solga towards the end of that round, finished it well. Referee Rich Mitchell. 
instructing the corners just to clean up the wetness there. Round two underway. For Darson, keen to get this underway, Dean, and we end up in this clinch situation again. Interesting exchange of kicks now, and now we see Saga. There we go, they switch into different techniques, but he's got to be careful about leaving his leg out there. But Darson, beautiful switch of that position, fired the underhook and got straight back to his feet. Yeah, I didn't know whether Thor Darson was going to work for some sort of crazy X-guard sort of sweep there. Took the leg onto his shoulder as it was. Just used it to reverse the position and we're back in this similar position in this fight. And we see Saga now, he mixes up strikes, he changes positions, goes for the single, goes for the double. He really keeps Thor Darson guessing what's coming next. He's going to look to hip bump, double leg takedown off the cage, gets it. Now he's going to look to go into side control, controlling the head of Thor Darson. Yeah, beautiful work from Solga. Not able to secure that cross face though. And Thodarsson again, Dean, brilliant work to get back to his feet. Utilizing the wizard and the underhook now switches positions. Solga again finds himself against the cage, using the knee ride there to keep his base and keep the body away of Thodarsson. But he needs to think about funneling for these underhooks and controlling the head of Thodarsson. You can see the ultimate pressure from Thor Dalson there, he's driving his head and driving all the way to Solga, forcing him to work. Yeah, if there is a criticism of Thor Dalson in this position, Dean, I mean, you see when Solga's in the, in the similar reverse position, he mixes it up a bit more, doesn't he? He throws a few more strikes, you know, he looks for the different types of takedowns. Thor Dalson seems to be getting preoccupied with his single leg and he, it's, he hasn't got it thus far, has he? And even when Solga's defending this position, just like that, he's mixing up the strikes, he's throwing yeah. knees, and he goes straight back to that wide base and uses the underhooks and the whizzer to defend. Yeah, I mean, that, that just goes to show as well, I mentioned Jack Mason in his corner. That's the type of experience you garner. If you're going to be in sort of a stalemate position like this, you may as well be scoring in the eyes of the judges. As I say that, Thodarsson gets the takedown, looks to take his man's back here, one hook in. Thodarsson's got to get the other hook and he's got to get that left leg on the inside, gets it. This is very dangerous for Solga. High back mount, looks to maybe flatten his man out. Thodarsson looks like he's reaching in there with his left arm. He needs to make sure he stays on the back. Oh no, correct if I'm wrong. Solga's doing a great job of defending. He's got two on one of the left arm of Thodarsson. Oh, that looks tight. Is it under the chin? It is. Solga fighting the hands. Difficult to see from our vantage point, Dean, how close this choke is. Well, dawson has got the body triangle that keeps it very tight. He's got it underneath the chin, Dave. There's only a few seconds left. Can Solga? Yes, he can hold out to the end of the round. Credit to him. Wow. For Darson, literally, surely, Dean, must have been seconds away from victory there. That was just experience from Saga. He knew the end of the round clapper went. He just got to ride it out, hand fight a little bit, and wait for the end of the round. Wow, what a finish to this second round. Again, probably the most telling action we've had in this fight thus far for Darson, taking the back, cranking on the jaw, and then eventually, I, we believe it's di very difficult to see the other back to us, but getting under the chin right at the end of that round. This one is a real back and forth encounter. Crowd really loving it, as we mentioned. So many in support here of the RVK MMA fighters. Solga coming out with the strikes off the bat, utilizing the footwork to get back to the center of the cage. It's like he's finding a home there for that right hand, but for Dalson, again, initiating the clinch, working some knees that are hitting straight to the bread basket. Another low blow here from Solga. I'm sure 
it wasn't intentional, but it's going to be interesting to see what the referee could do here because it is the second occasion, Dean. I don't think he'll take a point myself, but Rich Mitchell is one of the most experienced referees in the country at a very, very high level, works for the UFC, works for cage warriors. Going to be interesting. Bringing both fights together, Dean. Yeah, it would be devastating if he deducted a point there. I mean, this, this fight is very close as it stands. But like you say, Dave, I think he's just going to get a warning. Yeah, no more. Otherwise, he's going to take a point. Yeah, great refereeing. You know, as you said, you, you am at a level. You, you're looking at basically ruining the fight at that point. You know, um, as you said, a point there would be devastating for the end outcome. And it, it was accidental. These two are both just very keen to get busy in the clinch, and it's happened both ways, so it's a fine piece of refereeing for me. Sagra again, utilising the overhook, the whizzer, the knee ride there. He's got his shin on the left leg of Thaldalson, and he used it to separate. He's got to watch those kicks and the knees in the interim. Is this another low blow, I think? Uh, sorry, Dean. Of course, it's a knee to the face. They're adopting amateur, the new IMAF rule set, which states no knees to the head in amateur. Easily done again, I think. I don't think it was intentional, but again, I mean, what you're dealing with now is a, a concussive strike, potentially. Uh, difficult position for the referee. To his credit, Solga you know didn't try and sell it or anything like that just wore it I, I don't think he was too hurt from it um yeah i think he's he's gonna give the final final warning <laughs> he's just asking solgra if he's okay which i uh i think is key there i think it's just such a back and forth fight that both athletes want to implement their own game plan their own strikes their own takedowns it's kind of a frantic mma bout and it's almost certainly not any kind of animosity with regards to the, the no. differentiation of the illegal yeah. shots but um, it is a frantic back and forth well matched fight yeah extremely well matched I was just about to say before that little transition that uh, although Solgar is showing fantastic takedown defense on the cage he's going to have to get busy under these three minute rounds Dean because what he doesn't want to do is let this final round slip away from him um, and then the unfortunate illegal strike I mean they had their backs to us so we, we didn't see where it landed initially but Obviously, there's no debate from the RVK MMA corner or Thaldarsson himself must have clearly landed to the head. And we are ready to get underway again. Nice body kick from Solga, but again, it's Thaldarsson rushing his man to the cage. And I mentioned it just now, Dean. Although he's not getting taken down here, Solga, he's got to change the action and where it's taking place, hasn't he? Yeah, he's got to switch this position. The, the eyes of the judges, you could argue he was being the one pressured and he is the one being forced to defend. He's doing a great job of defending, but he needs to switch out of this position or turn Thordalsen onto the cage. Yeah, when he gets the position, he's the little busier man for me. He keeps the knees going into the legs and into the body. But as it is, Thordarsson doesn't really need to work if this is all that's going to happen this round. As you mentioned, he's controlling the position. He's got these double unders and he has hit a takedown from here before. He's looking for one now, but ends up on his back. Solga's on top. Looking for the choke. Solga now potentially looking for the guillotine. He'll switch around to this position here. He's going to look to posture up, to arm in there. Yeah, might try and work his way to the back. He's got options here. Das options, as it is for Darson. Doing a great job of getting back to his feet. Solga needs to just pull his man down here, Dean, doesn't he? He needs to rag his man to the floor. Or he might look for the standing guillotine. He's got Marcelatine. Whoa, that looked close for a second. So Darson very smart there. He didn't allow himself to get pinned by the cage. He dropped down to his knees and hand fighted and got his head out of that position. E excellent submission defense. From Thordalsen. Yeah, but great position here for Sogol. We mentioned he had to change the tide in this one, and he's done so. Ended up on top from that takedown, and now looking to get busy in the clinch. But Thordalsen reverses his man. It's so back and forth, this one, Dean. This is the difference here, the underhooks. Thordalsen funneled for the underhook there in that position. It gives him more control.
And that's the end of the fight. A good competitive fight. Unfortunately, split up, was it four or five times, Dean, I think, from uh, referee interventions, but all accidental, I'm sure. A good show of respect between these two and a great fight overall. Credit to the Darson and Solga. This one is going to be left in the hand of the judges here at Fight Start. It's another unanimous decision from our judges in favour of your winner.